Hello and welcome to this user guide for the Uleska platform on adding applications and automating security testing. The Uleska platform is built as a bridge between multiple different types of technologies within Agile and DevOps environments. So whether you need to be running Jenkins or Azure DevOps to call security tools like Fortify or Burp or open source Kali tools or your own custom scripts and pump that information out into things like Slack or Jira or understand your own GRC reports, Uleska acts as a bridge and a DevOps Agile environment to allow all that to happen. Just to note that everything that we show here in the user guide is also available via our API first led uh, design, allowing all this to be con controlled and configured and executed simply via um, authorized API commands to our system. So Uleska platform runs by configuring a number of applications, but then each application you can have a number of versions. In this example, we are going to run the test bank and we're going to show the configuration already provided for this to give the context. Uh, this configuration will be put in via this UI or again via our API. So first of all, you simply configure application name and description. As well as at the high level, some information allow us to determine the risk and impact of vulnerabilities found against this uh, application. This is used later on by our risk mechanisms to determine the impact of vulnerabilities that exist in the system. Things like the number of users. A vulnerability against one user or a million users obviously has a very different impact. Is the system internal or external? Are the pages supposed to be authenticated or not in general? And simple values for downtime and restoration costs. Now, specific to this version of this application, we've given it a version number. That could be also names like staging, deployment, etc. For DAS testing, for dynamic testing, we've got the schemas and the hosts that we would attack. Or for source code management, you would put in the source code information of the GitHub or whatever other types of repository that has the source code to be analyzed. This particular application set up for dynamic testing. It has the ability there to say this is the login path and the login template. Essentially here, the Uleska platform tracks the information that would be required by any testing person or testing tool to be able to investigate that particular application. But here we're doing it centrally. We're doing it in one place so that whenever we later on call 5, 10, 15, 20 different types of security tools, you have the information in one place. Record it once and use it multiple times thereby saving yourselves lots of time in terms of how running these types of systems, but also making it a lot simpler for you to make changes uh, if any changes happen to your environment. Next, we configure roles and users. This is obviously only for dynamic testing, but it allows us to get a better picture of web applications that would have different views depending on the different user. As in, sometimes the administrator user has access to different pages that a standard user or a banker user, etc. And so this allows our application both uh, to test the various parts of web, web applications, but also to spider those and discover those pages independently. So you've got a better and automatic uh, way to determine the overall system rather than simply testing one user with one URL. Uh, essentially, the number of users determines how often we run the tools so for example multiple web uh, security tests would be run for each user so slightly extends the time to execute the testing but gives you a more comprehensive check for this particular application it's web pages but for uh, source code testing that would be uh, source code pages here we can uh, record the pages found by our automatic spiders upon every test so if you're testing the system weekly, you'd be able to determine and find brand new pages put in that week through our spidering and then make sure those new pages are covered in the subsequent tests that are being executed. Also, you can specify for each page any data ask, uh, aspects that need to be recorded. So for example, here, the Save Accounts page can access information that is public, that's PII, that's got finance information as well. We record this because any vulnerabilities then found in relation to that page or can affect that data obviously have a higher impact in terms of fines like GDPR, PCI DSS compliance, etc. 
So this allows us to give better information back. It doesn't have to be entered, but it, it increases the ability for the, um, the risk enumeration to be more specific. And again, only needs to get recorded in one place. These web pages can be entered again via our existing spidering. They can take import, uh, imports from other tools like Burp, etc. Or these can be entered manually if required. At this point then, you take, configure the test tooling you want to run against that particular application. Here we have a mix of uh, commercial and open source uh, applications, uh, sorry, security tools. The security uh, SAP proxy spider allows us again, as I said, to uh, enumerate the, app, the web pages within a web application. And the uh, different tools here allow us to combine and connect the execution of this testing through whatever tooling needs to be required. So the Uleska platform in the background is the ability to connect with Fortify, SQL map, whatever those testing tool may be, and to allow that to be set up and uh, running just based on the click of a button here. So no longer do you need security skills actually sitting there running the tool. This allows the information you've already uh, presented, like how to log into the systems, where the source code is, what type of users are, etc., allows that uh, application context to be fed into these tools and run in an intelligent fashion. If the tools are commercial, um, those uh, commercial licenses would already be owned by the client or can be purchased through the Alaska um, business with our partners. Any open source tools are brought along automatically with the open with the Alaska platform, and there's also the ability to set up what's called uh, custom tools. So, um, oops, if we set up a new tool, what a custom tool is essentially is the ability to say there are certain, certain um, types of check that may not be provided by off the shelf or commercial tools. Something that's maybe specific to an organization or fund something found manually in a penetration test that can be easily automated through uh, re, uh, rerunning a few URLs or a few requests. Here, the custom tool functionality allows the Uleska platform to be extensible to include those custom checks, those scripts, those things that are needed by many organizations to complete their security portfolio and have those productized and centralized inside the Uleska platform. So they're automatically orchestrated with all the rest of the tooling we provide. You can provide proof to auditors and to stakeholders that this type of checks has been run daily, weekly, whenever that is, because every time you run the security checks here, that information is recorded in our database and you have a proof of record that the security checks were done. And it allows you to expand the Alaska platform to meet your, your software needs. So as your applications and software grows, the security uh, checks you can provide can be easily uh, added here as well. So if there was any commercial or open source tools that the Alaska platform say didn't have integrated right now, and we don't have it right in our roadmap, you can easily integrate that within five or six lines of Python or Java code. So if I'm to go back then to the listing of our applications and our uh, security tests, to be able to select which ones you want to do, we can simply click these on and off to say this is the type of tooling we want. And the tooling can be configured a lot more detailed if you wish. This again lets your security teams come in, do this once, set up how this testing should be done, and then let that automatically happen day in, day out, without needing to take their time to execute this testing. So what we will do with this particular example is we will just leave SSLIs running now. Typically, the Uleska platform is used to run multiple tools and cover more of your technology as you need. So you can have multiple tools running for your application layer, multiple tools for your cloud layer, for your container layer, for your operating systems, for network, etc. In this particular scenario, we're just going to run one in the interests of time as we're doing this user guide. So we simply hit save and continue. Here's another place for us to import any web pages we need. The report screen allows us to configure, set images, set uh, uh, scenarios, set um, contents, etc., of PDF reports that we generate and give to um, development teams or auditors. That's shown in a different user guide. And we have the scheduler here to be able to allow us to test now, to run things uh, through a schedule, 
or to be obviously scheduled by other DevOps teams, and DevOps systems. So in this way, Uleska platform, as I mentioned, allows you to connect many desperate systems in your Agile and DevOps environments and make it easy to get quick value and simple testing and output done for software security. So if you have a team running Agile on Jenkins and they want to be able to run Fortify, instead of them having to connect those two things, the Uleska platform easily makes that happen through one simple configuration. Output is then provided to things like Slack, Jira, out in PDF, or out to our own system, or out of our API, and into whatever GRC, G, GRC tools that you may need. Again, if you have another system then that's using another team that's got Azure DevOps and wants to run all the Kali Linux tools, the Alaska platform allows you to get that going within a couple of hours rather than four or five months of development to have those things connected up. This reduces your IT costs and gives you no, way, no, no ability of the risk that's happening day in, day out. So what I will do is I will go back to the application screen, again, run test bank. And what we will do is actually run the tests against that version because this will show how the system runs. So again, I will, in this scenario, I'm hitting the test now button. Typically, this API would actually be called by uh, something like Jenkins or Azure DevOps through an authenticated interface to allow this to happen during the automatic builds. So test now actually starts that run. We can see if I click on this, this will show the output from the tool. Uh, that is running in the background. But I'll just go back here to be able to show the tool still running. Oops. And so that monitors the test running in the background. It's taking the information we have already configured on the application. For this example, it's a dynamic test. It knows where the system is set up. It is spinning up that test tool in a, a, its own container. It is running that test against the system and it'll report back to us whenever that um, test execution has completed. This allows you easy access to the information coming out. This allows you easily understand what um, testing has happened. And as you see, the testing is already finished. So we click on results. We will see the issues that have been returned from that particular issue. And we can see that um, well, there is. So see the full details of the information that came out from that particular test. Okay, thank you very much.